NFT stage. And uh, thanks, Ganesh, for the introduction to NFTs. And we are starting this uh, panel. This is NFT as an asset class, as an investment class. So we have a panelist with us where we'll discuss about it. Uh, I want to start with, uh, you know, mm, is NFT emerging as a new asset class and an investment class? How do you see it? Uh, hello, everyone. Um, it's, it's a first session after the lunch. So probably you'll be in your own metaverse. So we are trying to get you over here. Um, with respect to uh, NFTs, NFTs are kind of uh, a digital asset. It's kind of an immutable identity uh, you attach to any digital entity. Then that will become the digital asset. And it has a huge potential, and there are a lot of uh, use cases you can build uh, around that. And what we are seeing is just the digital collectibles that, that is called as NFT, uh, but there is uh, more meaning to it, and uh, there are more potential opportunities uh, which you can do uh, with that digital asset uh, which you identified. So that's how I see uh, NFT as a digital asset class. Uh, okay, yeah. Hi, guys. Uh, thanks, Priya. So for me, um, yes, NFT is a digital uh, asset. And uh, the reason behind that is that any creators or any artist um, who creates an uh, artwork is a unique digital asset by itself. So NFT is a unique digital asset. It can be traded, it can be bought, it can be sold, it has a value to it. So definitely, again, it can be a digital asset. Um, it's like the traditional time when we used to collect um, stamps or, you know, um, a, a vintage car or any of the, those sort. Similarly, this is uh, a collectible which can have a price which which can be rare and it is an asset at the end at the same, yeah. So yeah, uh, I also agree to that. Uh, definitely NFT is an asset and how I like to see it is, uh, you know, to, um, to look at it uh, from a broader, uh, as a broader picture if you, of it, if you see it that, you know, how the digital, you know, future of digital tr uh, transformation is where, where it is going. And based out of that, you can see how NFT can be used. So I don't. I like to see NFTs uh, as a whole uh, with the entire ecosystem. For example, um, if we talk about it, uh, the first major chunk is metaverse and gaming. Gaming is a two hundred billion dollar dollar industry today, and NFTs is are revolutionizing how people are interacting in a game, how they are monetizing um, the you know digital content within a game, and same is with metaverse and. It is interesting, like in uh, how in metaverse, metaverse again is also is expected to be a seven hundred billion dollar industry by 2020, uh, 2030 and is growing with a CAGR of forty seven percent. And to anyone to you know navigate within metaverse, you need NFT as an asset. So today is the you know time when you can actually get a collateral loan from NFT. What, what is an asset? You know which holds a value. You can transact with that. So. So what I'm trying to um, you know, establish here is with the change in the digital world today, NFT will be one very important part to navigate in these uh, you know, uh, realm of this new future digital world. And um, we have seen so many you know, uh, sessions yesterday about gaming where you know, so many games out there, whether it be XC Infinity or um, uh, Kitty, Kitty Cryptos and all of that. They are using, you know, NFTs as, uh, you know, as an asset within the game where you can, you know, have an opportunity to play and earn. And so these are mostly related to the ecosystem. But uh, apart from that, there are standalone projects uh, where artists are selling their, you know, art and collectors. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. And the other, and the second part is the standalone projects. Um, Apart from metaverse and gaming, the standalone projects where people uh, are actually selling their arts and you know um, whether arts or sport uh, NFTs. So that's a different field altogether. And I really strongly believe that uh, you know in in the future. Right now, it is mostly around people who are like designer, technologists, or entrepreneurs. But I will, I would like to see how it scales up. Uh, and goes to the local level when people can actually, you know, uh, do those transactions uh, and the creatives can 
work, utilize this platform to, you know, sell the NFTs worldwide. So definitely uh, with that, I really feel that it's, it is an asset and it's going to go a long way. So adding to it, uh, very well said. Uh, for me, uh, NFTs are definitely, uh, as an I see, uh, an emerging asset class. And, uh, but NFT is a, is a technology, basically. We have to understand this thing. So it is going to be a junction of uh, asset classes that are going to be at the front. You know? NFT is a way where we are bringing in more liquidity to these kind of asset classes. We are investing in, in uh, again, very similar kind of asset classes. We are investing in real estate NFTs. We are going to invest in you know, uh, digital NFTs that going to bring in or get us some key or passes to uh, you know, uh, get to some clubs or, you know, some definitive uh, higher uh, elemental or so social norms. But uh, what I feel is like uh, NFT as in technology has uh, given us the privilege now uh, to bring those particular kind of asset classes to the masses as well. So what I feel is uh, NFT as an asset class, yes, but uh, but at the same time, would love to know, being, you know, primarily as I'm a product guy, uh, we all understand, you know, user review is important. But how many of you have actually invested in NFTs? Can you please raise your hands? We all do understand what NFTs are, right? We are all here to, uh, actually we know the patterns that is going through, is dumping. But how many of you actually have invested uh, in NFTs so far? Come on, raise hands, yes. So penetration is still pending. And uh, this is what, uh, you know, uh, why I say it's an emerging asset class and we are going to look forward to it, yeah. Can I just add something to this? Yeah, yeah, sure. So <clears throat> when you ask this question, is NFT a, a digital asset class or not? So asset, when the word asset comes, asset has a value to it. And many of the NFTs, you know, one needs to understand that it has to have a value, not a digital form, but it has to have a value. If the asset doesn't have a value, then it is of no point buying that particular NFT according to me. Now, how that value comes in, the value can come through, you know, any kind of utility behind that particular NFT, or it can have multiple use cases. Like one can be a physical, like digital, what we call it as. So, you know, that NFT represents a uh, physical NFT where, you know, somebody buys that and they get a physical product to their, you know, address or to their house. Uh, second is you can unlock content. You know, if you, if somebody says like, a, say for an example, a sports person says that, okay, if you buy my NFT, you get a ticket to the concert or a ticket to the, you know, the sports game which is happening. That's the value behind that. If the fans want that way, then, you know, they see that particular asset having a value. So for me, I would say to anybody who's wanting to get into NFT or to buy or sell or whatever, the NFT is not about just the digital artwork. It has to have a value and then only it is an asset class for me. Yeah. So very well said, adding to it, sorry. Yeah. Uh, with the uh, advent of uh, NFTs, uh, we have seen community as an asset class as well. You know, And that was a very beautiful uh, emergent uh, that came to uh, front and uh, what I feel in coming times uh, the way you uh, you know see BTC as an asset class or you know the tokens as an asset class NFTs are going to way bigger than this in coming times yeah you rightly put like uh, we are just scratching the surface at this moment uh, we see the digital collectibles as uh, equivalent to NFT but NFT has uh, more uh, prominent use cases like uh, if you wanted to register for a sales deed for your land, you can NFT, you can use the NFT. And if you want to transfer ownership of your car, you can do that with NFT. And uh, there are some new emerging tokens that are coming up. They call it a soul bound token, where the NFT is kind of uh, going to the next stage where you kind of attach a person uh, to that soul bound token, which is not transferable. And you can attach all your medical records, your personal details to that and that become non-transferable, but still that is an NFT. So these kind of use cases uh, are emerging, and uh, we are kind of uh, seeing like what is the utility value underlying uh, to invest in a NFT. So that's how uh, the market is emerging. 
So if somebody uh, owns an NFT, has an N NFT, uh, or, you know, want to uh, go for an NFT project, so what should he look into it? Like, there are many people, and some of them have raised hands, you know, they have an NFT. But if I'm buying it, if I'm uh, doing it from the investment perspective in my portfolio, what are the factors one should, you know, uh, take into account? Uh, sure, it's like any other asset class you buy. You just do the basics like uh, what is the interesting, inter intrinsic value of that asset class. And also, uh, what is the community behind that and how reputed the author or the organization who's uh, providing the NFT. And what is the... Uh, for fan base and the community support you have for that NFT. So all these needs to be considered and also the business model, like uh, what is the rarity in that NFT, like how they are going to uh, mint uh, new NFTs and what is the uh, asset value that's going to get over a period of time, uh, whether you'll be able to resell that, whether you'll be able to rent it or, so these are certain factors which you need to look at uh, before you see like whether I can invest in this NFT. So when I'm, I'm uh, purchasing an NFT, should I also see that it's backed by a tangible asset? It's uh, better uh, to invest in that project or rather than a pure digital? Um, I mean, right now, uh, the digital collectible market is uh, uh, maybe at, 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 at its peak. Uh, maybe many marketplaces are coming out, but the digital, like uh, if you're attaching or anchoring uh, a physical collectible, uh, to a digital NFT, that market is kind of still uh, emerging right now. And uh, because you have a tangible value uh, for that NFT, uh, that, that is going to go places. Uh, but uh, there are not many companies doing that because of the custodian uh, regulatory uh, aspect of it. But uh, that place is evolving and emerging. And uh, at least you have a tangible uh, thing uh, to back your NFT. So that space is more interesting. We need to see like how that's getting unfolded. Okay. So I'm yeah, so I totally agree to you and I might uh, add and repeat what you said. So so let's take an example that okay, somebody who has come up with an NFT project and uh, we start from beginning, like you know, in real world or maybe in web two, how you buy a product or how you buy an asset. Similarly your you know, a user, I would say that, or a buyer, I would say, has to consider this particular elements that what this project is all about, what value this will bring in, or what uniqueness, what he said, as in like what rarity it has, what utility it is having. And at the same time, you know, who are the promoters or founders behind that? Okay, what are their visions? And most importantly is the roadmap for that particular project. If they have any, you know, tokens associated with that, then you know one needs to understand the token tokenomics of that particular project. So I think there are multiple aspects. Like you know, before you make your decisions to buy that particular, also the price points, what they are you know pitching it to, is that overpriced or not? So all these elements would you know finalize it to a decision that whether you should buy an NFT or not. That's my say to it. Yeah, I uh, agree with both of my panelists what they said and. Um, NFT, investing in NFT is definitely a high risk, high reward proposition. So how I like to simplify this uh, by adding to what uh, has been said is if we, like, if we divide the buyers, you know, I like to categorize them in like, uh, divide them in three categories, uh, collectors, investors, and commercial buyers. So how does, how does that, you know, uh, it, it is, uh, how does that help to understand that how how you can you know invest or as a creator what you are creating who you are creating for so if you understand the spectrum of those buy uh, those buyers so how do I li how do I like to define it is collectors for example are the one who are enthusiast enthusiast of art fashion sports hobbies they are the people who have deeper understanding of what they are buying you know they have already have the taste of you know. NFTs, uh, you know, uh, many of the initial NFTs like CryptoPunks, which is which has a background of like CryptoPunk is based out of you know punk uh, scene from London from 1970s. So people who understood that, you know, they are the one who made it popular. So they are the real collector, like in real world situation, you know, they they have the taste and they want to earn, uh, you know, buy those. And then, uh, but the second most the difficult uh, segment of buyers are the investors, you know, who may not understand it as well. But they are the one who are looking for, you know, 
some blue chip projects like uh, potential blue chip projects which can actually you know make help them making big money so all that what we said are you know a good checklist for those people who who do not understand it that well so but still to start with they have to think like an enthusiast you know to really see what really inspires you and then look at the team i always like to say that see what the team is talking about that project what do you feel what is the purpose of your, of your project like how do they define it and how they are communicating to their community how do they uh, how they are you know uh, making that bond with their uh, their community members or the buyers that those are the areas which is which are very important for these thus the investor the second segment to look for and also as i mentioned it is not nft should be seen as a whole like how is it is it going to be used as a utility is it going to use for metaverse is it going to be used for gaming or what so the commercial unit the third segment the commercial usage of that is very important to consider while you're buying like how that that can define the perceived value of any nft do you want to add something i think i'm pretty much okay what uh, said is almost done yeah. <laughs> Okay, so when we uh, look at the returns of NFT, we have seen some N NFT being sold for millions and, uh, you know, some not able to fetch so much. So, uh, how do you see the return perspective and do you think it's just a bubble or uh, it has, it does offer something? Uh, so I? No, I don't agree on that. For, uh, for example, let it be. Uh, how many of you believe uh, that buying a monkey picture for a lakh dollar or a five lakh dollar is actually a worth? Anyone? It's like buying uh, uh, like uh, a BDC when it was hundred dollars, you know? Now how? How it is an important? For example, if you have a BAYC, right? Uh, that is the power of community we are trying to, uh, you know, fetch. And now imagine uh, you're flying in Emirates and you have a special club preferences because you have BAYC. You are elite now. You're getting it. Right. And this is what you're getting paid for. This is actually a new form of loyalty programs, a new form of gatekeeping, a new form of, uh, you know, uh, I'm talking about just about digital uh, NFT landscapes, a uh, new form of clubbing, meeting people. And this is what mankind has, you know, uh, has always done throughout the times, you know. There has always been gatekeeping, uh, if you see in the history. There has always been, you know, uh, uh, you know, and we just, uh, just gave a new technical perspective to it now, which, because of the, uh, the way uh, we have moved from 2G to 2.5, and the way the world is moving towards Web3, we are highly, the world has, uh, uh, the community has grown to a complete, you know, world global size now. Right. And uh, from the past 30 years, the way we are communi communicating with each other uh, and the social networking, the, the way we are doing, uh, I think uh, these type of new loyalty programs and these type of new emergency very much required. And this is what uh, this particular kind of NFTs, uh, putting millions of dollars in a uh, digital monkey pick, it becomes important. Right. I think it's all about the exclusivity you get. Uh, so you get a privilege when you invest in such projects and also who's backing that and also the community who has the backing for it. So all this aspect uh, coming to play, definitely there is a bubble, but uh, uh, there is a value as well because of the exclusivity it has. So now, when I am buying, uh, shall I only look for the exclusivity part of? Um, it depends, like uh, there are new players emerging uh, every day. So you need to uh, rightly point out and see like uh, what is the next uh, BTC or the next uh, BAYC, right? So uh, th that, that is the key. Um, with brands now, uh, I mean, connecting with the uh, uh, companies like uh, Yuka Lab and Adidas is kind of having a, a partnership with them and they're kind of exclusively bringing BAYC based uh, uh, sneakers and products uh, with, with a premium. And uh, whoever owns that, uh, they are going to get a special treatment. So in that way, that's going to improve the uh, brand value as well as uh, bring more exclusivity to the uh, NFT owners as well. So these kind of business models are emerging and uh, the, we are still just uh, scratching the surface now. Uh, so brands are getting in, Nike had a good run in the recent past and other brands are getting in, Gucci and uh, I think um, 
Dolce, Cabana, all these uh, European brands are getting in to see some, uh, some piece of it. And uh, with that, NFT digital collectibles, when they work with brands, is going to create exclusive value. Why uh, it's not just a bubble? Yeah. yeah. So I think uh, certain percentage will be like wiped off from the NFT marketplace for sure, or the markets. Um, the the NFT projects which will not have any kind of underlying assets, um, or they just got into this particular you know creation of NFT just by the sake of it that okay everybody is getting into that and you know I can sell my NFTs for millions of dollars or $100,000, you know, they will be gone if they don't have any kind of underlying assets to that. So, and I personally think, you know, it might be 30, 40% of the NFTs in that uh, space. So that will be wiped off. Uh, but we cannot link that with the bubble, because as he said, uh, you know, it all depends upon, you know, the value proposition, what will be there behind that particular NFT. So, um, we have, uh, like we have, I can t I'll talk about my, so we have a marketplace, but we also have a studio which helps NFT projects for no cost to deploy onto a marketplace and we take care of everything. Now, we had one particular project where, you know, that particular lady is a photographer and she said, okay, I want to come up with an NFT project and I asked her that, okay, what utility you would be giving? She said, okay, I will, uh, whoever buys that particular NFT, I will, let's take an example of Bangalore. I'll give that particular NFT holder a city tour. Now, I don't see this kind of stuff will work well. This is not a proper utility what we are talking and for that reason, somebody will go and buy an NFT. So this kind of mindsets and this kind of thoughts which somebody wants to come up with will not work. It has to have an actual life use case. It has to be associated with real time products or real time things like I, I'm sure we might have heard of an NFT project which says if you are an avid traveler you buy an NFT for hundred thousand dollars and you get lifelong business class ticket free then I will buy hundred percent I will buy because I travel a lot during the year similar kind so I'm saying this kind of projects will work otherwise uh, it can go off but it's not a bubble for sure it will be coming up big time and uh, more and more creative ideas not only the big brands but People like us, they are also coming up with good ideas and good business strategies behind this NFTs and they are delivering their, you know, value propositions out here. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll add to that point, right? Uh, exactly, NFT is as, is as strong as the asset it holds. So what is the idea and strategy behind? What, what are you actually giving to someone? Is it... It, that, that defines if it is gonna stay or not. So with and every technological shift, we always see great hype and great low, and then this question arises, and I think that is applicable to NFT as well. But I really see that a lot of potential, uh, not just as like uh, we discussed, you know, in different uh, um, different areas, uh, not just in metaverse or gaming, but like traveling, as Bhavesh mentioned, or healthcare or retail. How you know value-based NFTs can be conceptualized. Um, travel, like uh, we just spoke about, um, there. Um, if I, I, I'm based out of United States, and so I know that there are eight billion people who travel there, and uh, health insurance is one of the major problems. So think of it that if someone is traveling to US and they want to find a good health insurance, can they buy an NFT, which can actually provide them? You know, they don't need to find someone who's based out of there and talk to them to, you know, get the answer. So that 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 can be done through NFT or. Uh, many other things in fashion as well, you know, the fact that it is borderless, the fact that there's a common currency, all of these helps, helps you in, you know, making it.